Hello, everybody, and welcome to Schwab Coaching. Our next topic is transitioning, uh, transitioning, I should say, from Street Smart Edge to Think or Swim, with today's focus on charting. I'm your host, Lee Bull, one of the education coaches here, joined today by my friend and colleague, Michael Fairborn. Hey, Mike. Hey, Lee. Great to be back with you. Looking forward to it. Yep. Charts here. And Absolutely. And we're joined in the chat today by uh, Ben Watson, a very knowledgeable investor. So he will be very familiar with Think or Swim. So he will also be answering questions that we can't get to. All right. Before we can get to everything, though, we do have a few disclosure items we need to address. So we're not probably going to cover options today, but if we did, they do carry a high level of risk and are not suitable for all investors. Certain requirements must be met to trade options at Schwab. Also, multiple leg strategies have multiple commissions. Also, please keep in mind the information today is for general informational purposes only, nothing to be construed as a personal trading recommendation or endorsement of any strategy. Also, Schwab does not use, uh, recommend the use of technical analysis as our sole means of investment research, even though we're going to be talking about charting today, but certainly uh, a lot of traders like to look at the fundamentals as well. There is no guarantee if we talk about stops at all that a stop will exit at the activation price because it turns into a market order. Also, for sake of simplicity in this demonstration, we will not include the effective commissions or taxes. Uh, if we mention backtesting, uh, past performance is never a guarantee of future success. Also, investing, of course, involves risk, including loss of principle. Uh, if we look at probability analysis, which we usually do on options, we probably won't do that today. But the theoretical situations don't always pan out in real life. Uh, also, paper money is one of the options you have to trade on Thinkorswim, where the trades actually don't go anywhere, but you get to use all of the uh, functions. But keep in mind that results that you get in paper money don't always transfer into real life trading because markets can change. And with a stop limit order, you risk missing the market altogether in a fast moving market because your stop turns into, on the activation price, it turns into a limit order. And if it kept dropping, you may or may not get out. So do keep that in mind. Okay, so we are going to talk about navigating charts today on lesson three. I will point out, though, that we have. We just did three full days on the transition from Thinkorswim to, excuse me, from Three Smart Edge to Thinkorswim, and that's on our YouTube channel. And there's three sessions, so they're they're longer, and we go over almost everything. So that's already there and posted. All right, so Michael, I'm going to pull up Three Smart Edge. Sounds good. And I'm going to pull up a chart. I'm going to pull up a chart here. So what I'm going to do is, since I've used Street Smart Edge for years, I'm going to ask you questions. I'm going to try to do something on Street Smart Edge, and then how about you tell me how to do that on Thinkorswim? Sounds like a plan? Perfect. Sounds good. Yep. All right. So the first thing is, if I right-click on the chart and I go to Graph Style, here we have candlesticks, which I have it on now, how well candlesticks, bar, line, mountain, and point and figure. We're going to go over to Thinkorswim, and how do I set what type of chart I have? So let's go over to Thinkorswim. We will be using the chart tab, which is right here, one of the tabs across the top. We covered the mega navigation in some of our virtual workshops. So this is a candlestick. How do I change the type of chart? The type of chart, uh, Lee, yeah, specifically the price data, just like you'd shown with candlesticks. What we could do is go right to the gear, the wheel icon just above, like you said, once you're in charge, you got to be in charge to find that wheel. Right, right. So, you know, we could have been on another tab. We want to go to the charts tab and then we get to the wheel on the chart. OK, right, right. And then what we need to do is just go to appearance. Appearance. OK, appearance tab. Right. And then chart type on the left hand side. Yeah, there they are. Find that data. Yes. 
and we can make some adjustments here. There's a there's a preview window there as well. Okay, so if we wanted to look at a candle trend chart or line chart would look like that. Interesting. And uh, that's very cool. And we could do an area chart like that as well. We'll just keep it at candlesticks, but we did want to show you how to change it. All right, so that's the first thing I do when I go on Street Smart Edge. I like candlestick charts, so I go to my chart on Street Smart Edge and I turn it into candlesticks. The next thing I do, yep, is graph type. So here I have different choices of time frames, although uh, they seem to be, I just click on them and I turn it through a weekly or a monthly or whatever. Uh, let's go back to thinkorswim charts and tell me how I change the periodicity. Sure. So we're gonna sure. Go mm -hmm. Okay. Perfect. So how do I do this? Okay, sounds good. So everything's normally quite close to on uh, the platform. So we're just going to move one icon to the right uh, is a good way to get there. Exa exactly. Time frame setup, the period, this is listed here. And if you click on that lead, there is a default set. Those look similar. Well, we're both in paper my, or the, you know, the demo account. Those are, right. I think, the standard ones, but they can mm -hmm. be added to as well. You can customize the list down below if so you how do I do to that? add more. Uh, yeah, exactly. Customize right there. Okay. We can click on that. And then up top on the right-hand side, we can add a time frame in whatever time frame we want that's available to us. And this is nice, too, because then it does give us a sense of what is available to select here. Like, you got aggregation oh. type. They do have range charts as well. But there is a tick. And a tick chart, shorter term, I think most people are just using time charts. But you've got that just this is a side note and then of course intraday data you'd set really the key periodicities down below there lee uh with the interval and the aggregation period oh and i can what's more it's a little bit it's customizable then i can choose any intraday time period yes, or if I'm, on a, yeah. if I'm on a daily chart okay so let's change our chart i think i had it as a year let's change it to, to two years daily and here and i'm going to add that as a time frame so there it turned there so now it's going to show up in my list and i'm going to apply okay and now i have a two-year chart absolutely yeah th this should be there if you go to the the d now uh back to the uh, periodicity it should have the two-year in there to select yep, and i can select there it you go. Bingo. And then one thing too, Lee, just while we're at it, uh, you can raise those. What I tend to do, because if I have different time frames, it's easier for me to find those. Like for example, if I had a one year and then a two year, I put the I put the two year just behind the one year, so that I don't have like maybe yearly data in between. So I can actually go back to that customized list. Yeah. Okay. That's that's actually I didn't know this at all. So, so how, what do you do then? What you do is just drag that that two year daily just below the one year, ah. and you can uh, the one year daily, for example, and then you'll have that. And it's just you know they're just oh, yeah. organized by time frame. A little easier. That's really there. cool. Yeah, you can't do that on Street Smart Edge. Oh, okay. So yeah, there's something. Okay. There. And the right. thing too, Lee. Oh, sorry. Yes. Uh, while we're at it, there's just this. They do give you max time. And so anytime anybody wants to go back and back test, of course, that's historical data. It doesn't guarantee future results, but you can go back and back test. I was just looking at Coca-Cola today on one of these workshops that Lee and I do and uh, these branch workshop network things. And uh, Coca-Cola goes back to like 1980 in the 1980s. If you ever wanted to pull back that much data, if you ever wanted to, you can well, how, yeah, how would I do that? How would I do that? Yeah, sure. So right back into the same periodicity uh, icon. Exactly. We can go to a time frame here. Uh, and we can customize, let's say if we, well, maybe you wanted to add one that's longer term too, if you wanted to, but just, just for the sake of where you're at right now, that time interval, if we scroll to the very, very bottom of it, uh, once we click on time interval, two years, yes. See the max available, right? Click on that. And then you got it. The daily, we'd have to scroll back further, but if you right. showed it like on a monthly, it would maybe list everything on one chart, but. There you yeah, go. Yeah, wow. So you can okay, you can go back. Um yeah, Street Smart Ed charts actually only go back about uh into the beginning of the two thousands. Oh really? So you can, okay. Yeah, so you can go, wow, you can go really far back. Yeah, I and, think I think the Dow goes back to nineteen hundred. 
for people that do really? like back, back test longer term indices. Yeah. Dollar wow. sign DJI, I believe, is there. Dollar sign yeah. DJI. I mean, if anybody really wants to extend the limits of it, uh, I believe it does go to 1900 or so. So you could take a look at, oh, well. I think I just, uh, data. yeah. <laughs> they, they oh, do there have, it goes. Uh, there it oh, is. There it goes. Yeah, so you could like actually see what the Great Depression looked like, for example. I've done wow. things like that. Wow. That's, that's really interesting. Just for interest, yeah. Yeah. All right. That is cool. So let's go back and turn this into a one year daily chart. And then let's go back to Street Smart Edge. And the next thing I notice here is I want two time frames. This is a this is a weekly and this is a daily. And on Street Smart Edge here, I can tab my charts. I don't know if I can tab a chart on Thinkorswim. How how would I on you know easy screen have several time frames displayed without having to rebuild the charts each time and move them up? And how do I do that on Thinkorswim? Let's go over and you can walk me through it. Sure, sure. And my first thought when when I see these uh, kind of scenarios, Lee, it's always going to be grid charts, and that icon is a little interesting. It's just above the patterns. Uh, oh, this thing here. Huh? Yeah. Yep, that's the one. And if we click on that, you can really knock yourself. I mean, you can put a lot of different charts potentially on one page. Uh, there you go. Like that would be three side to side, for example. There you got it. Wow. Okay. So instead of tabbing them, I just have many different charts. Exactly. Exactly. And now on Street Smart Edge, let's go back there. Mm -hmm. um, it's going to have the same symbol in each tab how do i make sure that let's say i wanted um let's put up at t let's say i wanted at t mm -hmm. this is daily let's say i wanted an hour here and five minutes here but i i don't you know do i have to keep changing the symbol how do i do that can yeah, i you link can them together it. you can yep you read my mind just right there outside the box to the right that that little uh I guess a chain is, I guess, what it is. Uh, and we can click on that chain just like we have. Yeah, so notice we have the, we have a, a red one uh, mm -hmm. over there uh, in that chart that's showing it. Yeah, we click on that same symbol and select the one red one, and we should get at and And exactly the same thing on both. <clears throat> uh, chain here. Okay. Oh, there you go. You nailed it. All right, and now I could just change, for instance, I could change this one to a five-minute chart. I could change this one to a whoops. Could change this one to a uh, a weekly chart, maybe. Right. So now I have all my time frames. Okay, I get it. Yeah, and those could all. In fact, that whole entire screen right there that you've created, you you could even throw that on a second chart window. If you had a second monitor, I should say a second monitor window. You could detach that, Lee. You could throw it over there the software will remember it every single time you log in it's going to have whatever symbol you left off or if you know you just wanted at&t to be up there every time that would be up there too every time you logged into your computer it would remember it on that monitor now you said i could detach this how do i detach three charts i don't know how to do that yeah so over to the far right just in fact this is just to the right that little hamburger icon type thing to the right of the grids exactly uh-huh and there's a detach if you select that down at the bottom. That will okay. detach that entire screen. Uh, oh, yeah. And, and look what it did. I, I pulled this off my other monitor. Ah, so it already threw it on that monitor for you, didn't it? Yeah, amazing. Amazing. Okay. Yeah, I tend That's to like great. three monitors, Lee. I like a, a daily chart, a weekly chart, and then I like a movie playing on the third monitor. <laughs> <laughs> it's easier to scroll through price data that way when you got something on in the background looking for bull flags or whatever. Okay. Um, how many? Uh, well, we have a question on what we're doing here. Let's go back to, to Street Smart Edge for a second. And there seemed to be, if I zoom in a little bit here, down here. Um, so, num uh, 
On number one, actually, I think we had a question about this and Ben might have answered, but let's let's show it. So I zoom, I can zoom on my charts with a with a little wheel on my mouse mm -hmm. and go with this way. Mm -hmm. okay. Or cool. I can go down into the bottom here and you know zoom and in and out this way. How do I do that operation before we talk about um let's go back to a one grid here and we'll just go to our sure main chart how do i scroll or how do i zoom yeah so it's all in the palm of your hand uh, just on that mouse so okay. it's just a you you kind of find the area that you want initially to highlight and that's going to be your initial left click when you're going to hold the mouse button down and then you're going to highlight uh, in time going out in time or f further in time yeah you know what range you want to zoom in on and then exactly, it's just that simple, letting go of that mouse button, just like you did. Okay. Um, how do I get back to the regular view? Regular view. So bottom right-hand corner, there are, uh, it's kind of by the drawing tools, you'll see a couple of different magnifying glasses precisely. And because we did zoom in and we're mm -hmm. not looking at a one year, in this case, we do minus. And what the minus is going to do is zoom us back out so we can see that. There you go. Just a click or two. You can keep clicking. To, there you go. Exactly, Lee. Until you get okay. the full year there. Okay. All right. So I can I can drag and drop, and I can use these little things here. Well, what's this icon here? Uh, so that one is a quick way to get like your uh, like a um, well. That is the crosshair, so to speak. Okay. You you'd use and uh, like kind of that's helpful for lining up. I have it the same as you. Uh, okay. I'm, I'm lining up both vertical and horizontal lines together, but it, it can pinpoint like support and resistance horizontally. Okay. Of course, vertically, it would give you uh, time data. Okay, so you can choose your cursor type there as well. Exactly. Yes. Okay. Um, Good catch. All right, let's let's go back to Street Smart Edge charts. Uh, the next thing I like to do is right click on the chart, and maybe I want to add a study. So the way this works is a, it's a, on Street Smart Edge, since I know you're not all that familiar with it, it, it goes and it lets me show which indicator is in each of these categories. And then I can like the MACD, for instance. So here's how I would um, customize the MACD. Here's how I would color it. Uh, and then I can say what pane I want it in on the price or underneath. So I click OK, and it puts on the MACD. So let's go over how to put, for instance, a MACD on a thinkorswim chart and how to change the parameters if we didn't want it just the default of that. Sure, sure. Okay, sure. so let's go back over to uh, thinkorswim. Now, if I right click, I don't see a way to add Oh, I can add studies this way, I suppose. Yeah. But there's probably is there's other ways though, isn't there? Yeah, that way. So there is that same right click functionality, you know, that Street Smart Edge does have too. Where if you go okay. to Quick Study now, uh, over to the right, you have to kind of feed that over. Yeah, it's tricky. There you go. It'll just it'll point you into areas where you know, hey, moving averages, momentum studies. So it kind of can break that down for you. There's still a lot there. Um, yeah. So that's there. So it does still have something similar to Street Smart Edge if if uh, okay. clients like that. But I'd say a more popular one, Lee, is just clicking on the dropper icon. So real close again in terms of our icons, just to the left of the gear in this case. Exactly. And if you know the name of it, it this is the quickest way to add an indicator in it because there's a box there. You can just type it in. Of course, they're all listed below. You can scroll through them if you were looking at all of them. But exactly. Look at that. You got it. Okay, so um, the other thing I found, I mean, having played around with this a little bit, is you can get help if you don't know what an indicator is because you have so many of them. What do you have, like 400 on, on Thinkorswim, something like that? Yeah, I think that was last week. This week it might be 500, but you know, <laughs> it just keeps – it really does keep growing. And uh, that's an interesting thing. People can look at more stuff, but you're right. It's, it's an ex ever-expanding list. There's a lot there. But if you click this, it hmm. actually tells you what it does. So if, if you, if right here on the same screen. So uh, since a lot of these indicators were not on Street Smart Edge, I've been educating myself by just going down the list and click the, um, 
little icon to see, to see what it is. So I've learned a couple of things that way. So, okay, so I can pull it over, all right? And how do I change the, um, maybe I don't want 1226, maybe I want something shorter or something. How do I change it? Yeah, great question, the default, because I think people will change this. This is specifically uh, used a lot with moving averages, of course, Lee, and things like that too. But that same gear wheel will always allow you to make adjustments when you're looking at indicators. So you just want to follow that MACD all the way to the far right. Yes, exactly. And then clicking on that wheel right there will allow you to do not just changing the inputs, but you can see down below too, you can change plot the way that, way that it plots it on the chart too, size yeah. wise, style wise, color wise. Yes. So there's That's a lot cool. there. Yeah. So, okay, let's make a change just to show people how to how to do it. Um, so let's change this to, uh, let's change this, let's double everything. Let's make it a really long MACD. Typically when you're changing the MACD, you, you kind of keep the ratio the same. So I'll make it 2452 and I'll keep a nine period inclination there. So we can make the, uh, we can make all the different lines. So the average is the moving averages, but is it in the zero line? can do all of that. So let's just um, put, make these a little bit darker. Okay, and you can change all of these colors down here. There's a lot more customization, it looks like, than on Street Smart Edge. Yeah, you apply and, and, that. And one, and one there we are. Thing too. Beautiful. Yeah. One thing too, because a lot of times I'll have like the same set of indicators that I'm frequently using. Like let's say it's maybe, you know, MACD, RSI, money flow, uh -huh. or on balance volume, whatever the case might be. Uh, if you go back to that same uh, dropper icon, I'm going to highlight this for you so you could see this, but you might not want to always see the MACD and you might, you know, because if you have a lot of indicators on there, it can really kind of crowd up the chart. So if you just go back to that wheel, this is just a trick I've noticed. It's really helpful. They can still keep it on. But if you click the exactly the wheel right there. And then if you just take the show, the check mark out of the show study up top and then click OK, it will keep the study on there for you, but it will take it off the chart. So anytime you want to go in and like, you know, add an RSI instead of a MACD, because you might have two or three on there, the chart's getting crowded. That's just a good way to take it off and then quickly put it right back on. So, so how would I put it back on then? Show me that. Sure. So back to the that wheel. Yeah, it's actually a double wheel click, I guess you could say. Uh, uh, yeah, I'm sorry. I apologize. <laughs> we want to go to the other one. Uh, the yes. right. Right, that one there, and then we go to the wheel. Yeah, because that's always okay. going to be our indicators. You got it. Okay. And then we just put the check mark back in, and you got it right there. It'll put it back on. The software will remember whatever those last settings are because it is software. So as long as we close it this way, it will load it up with those same settings. So we'll have to change it if we wanted to change it, but those indicators will always be in there as well. Excellent, excellent. Now let's say. Um, you know, I'm a technician. Let's say I have this longer term MACD and I want to add um, something on the chart itself. Maybe I'll do a, a simple moving average. So from what you told me, I clicked on the beaker and now I can just click in, start typing the name. Oh, yeah, that's an easy way to do it, isn't it? And I can pull that over. Yeah, Let's make it a 50 day moving average. So then I have a question I want to ask you. Um, so I'm going to open this up here and change it to 50 because you showed me how to do that. And I'm going to make it uh, purple. Purple, there we go. And I'll make it kind of thick. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I like this setup. I have a longer term MACD. I have the histogram here. I got my volume bars. What happens if on Street Smart Edge, I can set a template to have all these. How 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 would I do this so I can just pull this set of indicators up without having to do a lot of work? Uh, oh yeah, just to have them saved. So they are they're referred to on the platform as styles. So if we go to the styles icon, just the right of periodicity there exactly, we can actually save the style towards the bottom. And uh, yeah, if you click on that right there, um, you can save this style. And a lot of times, yeah, I just name it whatever, you know, indicators I have. Exactly. 
something you'll remember and easy to choose, you know, when it does come up. That's perfect. Okay. So I click save. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, so let's say I start, uh, um, let's just say I take off all these indicators real quick. Mm -hmm. All right. So, so how do I, how do I launch that style now on, on the chart? Right, right. So it's right back into the same area that we, which would be style. Okay. Yeah. And there should be a load. Yeah, right, just above oh, yeah. it with – there we go. Okay, there we go. So I can – Oh, did it not go? Nah. Let's seem to. Style. Oh. Hmm. <laughs> That wasn't the style we saved, but this might be, I think this is an issue probably with the demo account. I've heard of the little things here. It should work fine yeah. on a live account uh, for yeah. sure. But that yeah. is Let me just see if, if, if oh. the other ones pull up. Let's okay. just see. Yeah, let's see what we got here. Yeah, that one did. Yeah. Uh, th this is a, a day trading type chart. It's got the 20 period EMA. And uh, uh, so they do they do pull up. There must be this little glitch on that one. Yeah, I think what might be it might be is that ultimately it will end up loading up because we're on the demo. It, it's kind of it plays kind of second fiddle, so to speak, kind of like uh, does to everybody's live accounts. Okay. Live account gets all the attention, so this one might take a little bit of time to batch out. Maybe maybe it's an hour or whatever. But uh, this the process yeah. is correct. In fact, you just proved it how that would work there, Lee. By the way, too, just as a quick note, tying back into our grid charts. Mm -hmm. Very helpful as opposed to having to rebuild all those grid charts. You know, once you have those indicators in place, uh, uh -huh. you can use the style to load up those secondary and tertiary charts uh, or however many we've got. Uh, let's, let's try that. Yeah. Okay. So now, and now let's see, we, we can link these together again if we want it. We'll just put in a symbol here though. Um, the, the other question I have is what happens? I got these three, but what happens if I want to like, you know, have this fill the full screen all of a sudden without building a whole new layout? What do I do if I have multiple charts? Okay. That's going to be a right click function Yeah, and there's going to be a maximize. Uh, uh, okay. Style. There it is right there. Yeah. Yes. And notice you get the style popping up too, the style icon. If you can't see it, Lee, actually you led us to the perfect place because if you can't see that because that chart's smaller, it's been minimized, right? There were three charts there. You got to maximize it first. Then you get to see all those icons, right? And yeah. You can load that style up. And then and then I'm assuming to put it back is right click. Oh, yeah. Restore cells. Uh, okay. Now, uh, someone has a question about. Mm -hmm. uh, indicator sets. Well, let me go back to a, a, a single single grid, single chart, I mean. Um, and I'll load up a different style. But there's also another way, too, right? I mean, if you if you just want a set of studies to put on, there, there's something called a study set, isn't there? How does that work? Oh, like a study set. Sure, sure. Well, let's see. I'm thinking kind of um, along the lines of. Oh, there we go. So there you go. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I, so, I, so I could. Perfect. Yeah. So yes. I could. Yes. Yeah. So I could put. Let's let's put an RSI on here too. I do, you can do the same thing with a style. Let's just show that. Glad you knew the, the answer to that. That's perfect. <laughs> I was thinking grid charts for a second. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we will uh, the RSI, okay? Mm -hmm. And also, if you like the, you know, if you like formulas, you can actually see how the thing is created by clicking the little formula box. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm going to put the RSI on the chart. All right, so I got the overbought and oversold lines here. Here's the RSI. So what I could do also is save this as a study set, and I could call it. You know, you could do it with a style or a study set. You can, it's, you know, six of one, half a dozen of the other. So I could call this RSI 50 day. Okay. And now I can go ahead and load study set. And you see, I've got quite a few, <laughs> um, depending yeah. on what I'm looking at. So I could just, sure. yeah, I have all these indicators set up the way I like. So I could just do, you know, I want the 2050 and 100 moving day average. 
boom, oh. just like that. Oh, so you can do it with a style, or you can do it with a study set. Right. Love that. Okay. Now there, um, somebody is asking about a cost basis indicator, and that was a new one that was added. It'll put your cost basis on a chart, right? Um, mm, that must. We have a question on that. We'll show a horizontal line at the cost basis, even if the open trade was prior to the chart window. I think so. Um, I'm interested in that. I have not. Yes, I mean stuff can be added each and every week. There might be a few things added. That'd be awesome to see. Yeah. People are always looking for that. Uh, was that a? It wasn't a think script, huh? That was part of the plan. No, it, it was a think script. Oh, it was a think script. Oh, got it, got it. Okay. Yeah, I just can't remember the name of it. But there, uh, I don't know, Ben, if you remember, but but there is one in here that uh, we developed specifically for that purpose to show your cost basis. So it was a created indicator. Oh, got it. I'm just trying to see if it's in here. I can't remember where it is. But so I don't know if you know that's there. Yeah. yeah. And nobody would until they have the code. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. That's what. Good to know, though. I love that one. Yeah. All right. Uh, let's go back over to uh, Street Smart Edge. And uh, it looks like I can trade from the chart. Now, what's what I saw that some people do is there's this there's this tool on Street Smart Edge, which is kind of all encompassing. And a lot of people like it. It's called the Symbol Hub. So I just want to show you something on this because uh, you're probably not familiar with the Symbol Hub. But what it does, whoops. Uh, anyway, let me go get it again. Mm. Let's get a symbol hub. Okay. And the symbol hub is a tool that has level two, the ability to trade, and a chart all in one view. My point is that it's very easy to do this same thing on Thinkorswim for those that are using this. So let me show you what it is. You simply go to these things on the left, I mean the right, <laughs> right on the chart. So if I wanna make this look like the symbol hub, what I can do is a couple of things. I can add level two, I can add news, and I can add trading. So there you go, there's a symbol hub for Thinkorswim. Just wanted to show that. But there's more, okay? There is also, there's a just a plain trading layout you can put on, which will give you the time and sales over here. And you can also, you know, customize this. We also have something called the Active Trader set up. Let me take off everything and just add the Active Trader. And this also will give you the ladder and everything on your charts. So just you know that those are all there. That's great. Yeah. So you can customize it, the chart window, any way that you want. And then just to get back to it, you just hit the C for the chart. And now I've got uh, level two with the buys here. I got my chart here. So you can definitely do that. That's great. Okay, we had uh, we have a question. Please bring back the block trade tool from Street Smart Edge over to Thinkorswim. We have something that's even better on Thinkorswim. Let's let's just go over that real quick. Called the Flash, right? Oh yeah, right, right, right. Let's go over that Big for flash. people. Yeah, because people have been asking about that. This is on charting, but some people look at the chart and black uh, block trades at the same time. So there's something that's even better. Okay, uh, let's go ahead and walk me through that to get the flash. Sure, surely. So uh, we can either click on the plus sign at the bottom, or we can just exactly do, switch a gadget window right there. Yeah, uh, let me just let me, you know, let's 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 delete this one. Switch gadget, maybe, okay. and it is called Trade Flash. Trade Flash, yes. All right, so. Not only do you get block trades, and you can put in a specific symbol, you'll get everything that's going on with that symbol, options, 
right? Or if you don't have any symbol there, it'll just stream everything. It'll give you block trades. It'll give you big option trades. So this is like the block trade indicator on steroids. Now, it's obviously going to be not very active if the market's closed. But so that is available, and it's actually better. Yeah, okay. that little icon just to the right, too, or I should say to the left of the hamburger icon, that little one right there, you can you can sort out which ones you wanted if you – Right, mean, well, you equity trades, trades which big delta about. trades. Yeah, exactly. So you were talking – so these are big large futures trades. You can't get that on Street Smart Edge. Mm. So anyway, just so you know. All right, uh, we have a question on Idea Hub. Yeah, Idea Hub is not coming over. Unfortunately, neither is Recognia to answer your questions there. Um, okay. All right, let's continue with charting. Let's go back. Smart Edge. Another right click. So chart templates are exactly like styles on study sets. Basically, it's the same thing. Um, Okay, so now you can go over to you hit research here that will take you over to Schwab.com to get some research. But you can go to Schwab.com on Thinkorswim just by clicking up here. Right? That'll take you that'll take you over to Schwab.com. Real quick, yeah. Yeah. You got it. So so that's yeah, that's that's one click only uh the other thing is let's go back to street smart edge mm -hmm. go into the charts and we have things that give us earnings and dividends but one thing i don't like on street smart edge is it doesn't tell me when the next earnings are coming out you got to go and look at the earnings and you got to say, OK, about three months from there. I think, correct me if I'm wrong, that that type of information is available on thinkorswim charts, right? It really is. And, yeah. and earnings. So, so how do I do that? So what you want to do there is when you're on thinkorswim charts, uh, you can click on the wheel, uh, the same wheel we looked at. Yeah. All right. Let me, let me just clear this up a little bit. Sure, sure. Oops, we need the chart. <laughs> okay. Yeah. That really cleaned it up. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, All right. But yeah, so what we could do is we actually click on the wheel. It's in a funny spot, but once you once you know where it's at, it's always there. Yeah. Uh, I, I guess I shouldn't say funny spot. It's in a, in a, a good spot. Um, you click on, after that wheel, uh, the gear, then we type, uh, click equities, the equities tab. And then from there, we would just want to make sure that the box on the left-hand side, the top box, Show corporate actions is highlighted because that'll give you, uh, Lee, that'll give you the earnings announcement. It'll give you um, dividends. It'll give you the conference call. All can be on different dates. Oh, okay. Well, so let's take a look at it here on um, AT&T. See, on Street Smart Edge, I'd have to go, okay, mm -hmm. the last one was on 124, so I got to figure it's about three months. But here I can, they put it right on the chart for me. The next earnings announcement is 424 before the, uh, market starts, earning conference call, right there. Tells me when it is. So Beautiful. that's a big improvement. Beautiful. Yes. It's so easy. And I, I've loved this. In fact, notice one thing, too, uh, because the, the chart has a little bit of room over to the right-hand side. Really, really helpful for noticing on this. You have, you know, when the earnings announcement that's been reported is coming out next, Lee, and you wouldn't see that otherwise. You see it just, like, right off to the far right there. Uh -huh. earnings announcement on AT&T, uh, that's upcoming. And if you don't have that little space on the chart, uh, you're not going to see oh. the earnings. And yeah, so, so, oh, yeah, so I, I would have to add extra. How do I do that? How do I add extra time so yeah, I can do that? So easy. Right back to that same gear icon. Okay. What we would do is we would just choose uh, time axis now in terms of our tabs and then you've got 10 bars to the right. I've just always traditionally used 25, but I think 10 is great. 25 gives me a little bit more time, particularly if somebody's right. got options over 20 days. They can see if an earnings announcement might be coming up or what those days might be, for example. But okay, so now I got to the, yeah. That's yeah, really and, cool. and that dividends, it'll show you if the dividends are increasing. If you point to earnings, like that last one that was actually reported 
Um, yeah. Again, yeah. If you just put the cursor on it, it will tell you what the earnings estimate were, what they actually came in at, uh, which is really cool. Uh, the I think too. Let me just double check. But I thought that if you, no, maybe I'm wrong. Uh, but I, I will say this uh, with the um, oh, right click. If you right click on it, Lee. You can go to the company's website, the press release. You can listen live to the conference call. Wow. Or, or it will take you to the conference call, and uh, you can listen to it later if you missed it, because that's it. that's obviously we're not listening live because this is in the past, right. but it would do that for us. So wow. that's really nice. And then uh, on the uh, dividend icon, that gives you the ex-dividend date. So not only to show you what that dividend amount is going to be, which is the dollar exactly the dollar sign there, so you'd have if anytime anybody wants to get the dividend, you got to own it at least one day, buy it and and own it, you know, hold on to it through right. that ex dividend date to to have it, to get the dividend, I should say. Cool. All right. Uh, well, our time is almost up. I want to make sure everybody knows with this with the transition, and we have a good crowd today. Uh, but if you know, we just did on charts today. To, um, Next week, we'll do something else. But I wanted to give you also, we're going to go over to our, um, I'm going to pull up a browser, and I just want to show you guys something. So if you go to our YouTube site, so, it, you know, just put in um, YouTube Schwab Coaching. I already, have, I just have it bookmarked. So, uh, and then you will see, we have, this is part two. These are hour and a half long. There's three of these, all right? Transition to think, think or Swim, where we go over basically everything in detail. So, um, and here's part one, here's part two, and, and part three is is just put up, I think, from yesterday we did. So um, I just wanted you to know that those were there. The other thing is, you know, we, we've gone from Street Smart Edge to Thinkorswim. But once you're on Thinkorswim, if you want to get much better at using it, look at, we have a whole series, Getting Started with Thinkorswim. Uh, I've never watched any of Cam's uh, webcast he's great so these are all here and then we also have previous episodes of what we're doing on on thursdays street smart edge to think or swim and then we have using think or swim the website which we're going to cover tomorrow at the, in the morning um street smart edge to think or swim web uh, we also have these as well so i just want to let you know there's plenty of things for you to uh, use. And the other thing I wanted to show you, just make sure you know that there is the platform transition guide, okay, with a lot of guides and videos. This is where you access it as well. So we try to give you as many resources as we can. We know this transition, you know, change is always difficult. We're trying to make it as easy as possible, giving you all these resources. So uh, our time is up. We have to get off the platform, but thank you all for your kind attention this afternoon. I want to thank Ben, who's been probably working his fingers off answering all those questions. I see how much he's been doing there. Wow. And I want to thank Mike for uh, being my partner in crime today. Always great to be with you, Lee. Thank you. Yeah. Take care, everybody.